Good evening, Juan Diego. This is Dr. Colosmo and Mr. Brunetti. We welcome to well, welcome you to our first Sunday evening parent update during this COVID-19 crisis. It's been quite a ride, hasn't it, Mr. Brunetti? It's every day something new. Every day, every day something new. Uh, navigating it's been a little bit of a challenge, but I think we're doing really well. You know, it's, it's the interesting thing is, is we're developing a lot of new teaching techniques and a lot of new communication processes. And we thought this would be one, uh, parents, is that it's one thing to talk to students and some of you in the morning about the logistics of Good Morning JD, but I know that as parents you have more serious concerns and, and uh, questions and issues that uh, transcend just what your students are, 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 are learning. And so the purpose of this broadcast and, and the upcoming email is to keep you informed with the best information that we have for what has transpired in the past and what will be transpiring in the next uh, two or three weeks. Hopefully through this broadcast and the information covered uh, in the email will provide you with a greater awareness of how to partner with us through and also give you a greater sense of ease and comfort knowing what issues are being addressed and what our priorities are during this time. Tonight, Mr. Bernetti and I are going to go through this. We're going to cover like five topics. The first is uh, the current outlook for our schedule, our calendar. Second is registration for next year, 2020-2021. The third is the status of our AP program and the testing that goes along with that AP program. The fourth is year-end rites, rituals, traditions, graduation, baccalaureate, etc. And then the fifth is to tell you everything we know about spring sports and might what might happen. So those are our five our five priorities tonight. Yeah, we're gonna try to take care of those five. All right, sounds good. So let's start at the very top and discuss our schedule because I know there's been a lot of information and maybe even some misinformation about you know what is happening and what's difficult is things change are changing really really quickly but what we know as of right now and this is our Sunday night broadcast is that um, you know we've we've launched into this online learning and um, process which I think has been very very successful well received we've are uh, we pretty much have closed our building except for essential services. And we know that this is gonna be our reality as stated by the um, bishop uh, through Friday, May 1st. Right, Monday, May 4th. Our intention right now is we're back at it on May 4th. Yeah, so it's not like a stay in place order necessarily like we're seeing in some of the big cities, but obviously we're talking about common sense and you know, students and families should do the very best they can to stay out of the way. So we've been on a new schedule already for two weeks now, right? So hopefully, yeah, our students, I hope you've figured that out by now. If not, you're going to be woefully behind. And parents, I'm, I assume that you know as well. And for it, it's actually a moot point because what we're trying very hard to do is have our student services uh, people, Mr. Saltz and the counselors, call uh, students that are not you know, plugged into what we do, but basically the daily routine, which we spent a lot of time talking about last week, is each day should begin at 8.30 with our Good Morning JD newscast. Classes then begin each day at 9 o'clock, and they end daily at 2 p.m., so it's kind of a good deal because they're not here from 8 to 3 in classes. Shorter. We try to shorten it just a little bit. And, uh, um, the online schedule allows for flexibility, it allows for freedom, and you know, I think one of the benefits of it is like our, one of our goals is we want students to be independent learners and this is kind of a shock and awe way of making them independent learners but I, I mean what's your sense do you think that that's really helped them kind of like try to get things done without having the teacher every single day kind of bearing down on them? I do I think it's a learning curve I think some classes it's been a much gr more graceful transition and I think other classes it's a little more difficult but Again, again, we've just started it, and I, it's a whole new culture. So I think for the most part, we're doing pretty well. I think that's true. And then what's hard, I think, parents and, well, students, if you're listening, and teachers, but, like, online learning isn't the same kind of, you know, bell schedule routine that says, you know, lock down at 9 o'clock in the morning, and at 10 o'clock go to your next class, and at 11 o'clock. There's more flexibility in uh, online learning. Uh, in ways that might really help students like take a breath and, and hopefully the, the amount of work is not too much. We're trying to monitor that parents very closely so that you don't have that. Um, 
you know, we, we don't want to, it's stressful enough, I think, for families and especially students that we want to provide the appropriate amount of work, work that's going to be good work that will keep them going. We want these school days to count toward the 180 days we need to complete, but we also don't want to make it so difficult that, that, uh, that it adds another level of stress to students that they don't need right now. And it's different than, I think, I think the mistake that we all make sometimes is that we transfer what we think is happening in a physical classroom and we move all that over to online learning and it doesn't really work that way. And our teachers are learning parents, so, so be patient with us and, and give us feedback if, you know, it's like the, it's kind of like Goldilocks, isn't it? It's like some of this online porridge. learning can be, yeah, right? The, the whole porridge now. Yeah, right. you know, is the porridge too hot or too cold or yeah, just right? And we want it to be just right and I don't think we're there yet, but we really are trying hard to do that. And so the expectation isn't that parents that your, you know, your child is in front of a computer six hours a day. Um, but, you know, it, 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 hopefully it's appropriate. And uh, then through Good Morning JD, our goal is to educate parent, or, or students and our teachers and parents um, as the most effective way to navigate online learning. Okay, our second topic tonight is registration. So this is, it's very simple, folks. Uh, we're currently finalizing all the details to begin registering all of our existing students. So that would be current freshmen, sophomores, and juniors that are going to be sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So if you're in the ninth grade, the 10th grade, the 11th grade. Right now. That registration. Is happening this week. This week. It's sure. going to happen this week. It's going to be online. We probably should have done this a long time ago. It's one of the, the bonuses out of all this. You know, that happens all over with colleges, so it's actually a really good thing. It's what this is, parents, this is what your students will be doing. You know, for senior students, you know, it's happening within, you know, six months, and, you know, you know it's just the way of the world. It's so. the way of the world. Mr. Colosimo will be sending out emails to you uh, Sunday or Monday with detailed instructions, step-by-step, step, what do I have to do? Uh, for juniors, you obviously have more flexibility with your electives. You will still have the opportunity to discuss those electives with faculty members and counselors just like we always have. Now, it probably will come with some glitches. I think we, we've done our best to look at what about this and what about that and what about, you know, every possible thing. So be patient with it next week, but our sense is that we're, are, we're hopeful that it'll go pretty smoothly. And again, it will be online next week or this week actually. So the third topic on our uh, Sunday night parent broadcast is this whole status of our AP program and the testing that goes along with it. Normally at this time of the year we would be finishing AP uh, content, we, begin, we would be reviewing for the upcoming exams. AP exams historically are, are um, issued from May 1 to May 15th, they're done inside of each school. We've had a long tradition of doing that inside of our gymnasium, but things are going to be different. So parents, you should have received, AP parents, you should have received an email from our testing coordinator, Mrs. Brooke Soto, earlier this week, talking about the changes that have been made by the college board that owns and uh, administrates the a uh, advanced placement program. Uh, they are uh, obviously responding to the COVID situation just like every other educational institution. If you did not get that email, you might um, send an email uh, of your own to Ms. Soto. I'm sure she'll be uh, following up. But as far as Juan Diego is concerned, is our AP programs are on track? Solid as it has been. It's all systems are go. You know, there's some online content that's being taken care of in our, in the, the online curriculum, but we are we are business as normal as it comes to our AP program. So we're committed that all of our AP programs are going to complete yes. as normal, and we're committed to making sure that all of the testing for this academic year for those AP programs will happen. They'll be normal, but what where we're a little bit vulnerable is we have to rely upon what the College Board says. Yeah, I think so, some people don't realize that that the the a big the, the AP testing format is completely controlled by the College Board, and we're waiting to hear what they have to say on how that's right. exactly going to work. My understanding is April third, uh, which is just around the corner. There'll be another update from the event, uh, College Board, but for right now, what we know is this: is that the AP program is in place. We will complete all the courses. We will do testing. The testing will look different than it has done in the past. Right. Uh, 
uh, College Board's opening up options to actually maybe do some of the testing, uh, well, almost for sure do the testing online and even allow that testing to be to take place at home in each student uh, in each student's home. Um, we'll, get, we'll get the update, so just hang in there, parents, but we, it, it's pretty much steady as, uh, as, as we go. Nothing has changed about how and with who your AP credits uh, are applied to various college, to whatever was in place three weeks ago is still in place. And then again, please refer to Brooks Auto, Mrs. Soto's email after you've read the supporting material. Email Ms. Mrs. Soto with any unanswered questions that you have. And you know, um, I think what you said is really true. The AP program is run by the College Board. We plug into that program. We do exactly what they tell us to do. But pretty much everything that we hear is steady as she goes. There'll be some adjustments, obviously, common sense adjustments, but we fully expect to complete the entire AP program as per usual this year. Absolutely. Bottom Maybe. line. Okay, so the fourth topic that we're here to talk about is year-end rites, rituals, traditions, graduation, baccalaureate. I know you're anxious to get information out about that, and I know our seniors especially want to hear what's happening with all of that. It's, it's, it's one of the things that's weighing on a lot of people's minds. So let me just start with this. I did send out a video earlier this week to our senior parents only, but I just want to reiterate what I said is that our rites and rituals and traditions, especially for our seniors, we've, we've built 20 years of that. It's a very, very important part of the culture of our school. And I know it's Dr. Col it's, it's your, your directive, your goal, our goal, to make sure that we keep as much of that intact as we possibly can. So if you have a moment, you can watch the other video that we sent out. So let me just say this. Currently, we have no reason to believe that the Senior Sanctus Terra that's scheduled for Sunday, May 3rd, the Senior Farewell Mass that is already scheduled for May 14th, the Baccalaureate Mass that was already scheduled for May 19th at the Cathedral, and our commencement exercises on Saturday, May 23rd. We have no reason to believe right now that those dates will be changed or moved. So the idea is this. We hope and pray and believe that come Monday, May 4th, we are going to pick up with school as students and parents knew it, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the month of May, especially for our seniors, is filled with those extremely valuable rites and rituals and exercise. We're not going to take the easy way out at all. No, absolutely not. We, we, there are a couple of things that we are looking at how we can juggle them that are they're going to have to be rescheduled or, or postponed in some way, shape, or form. And that would include Kairos 21 and 22, uh, the junior rite and junior Sancta Terra, the prom, um, those things, uh, they're not, it's not that we're canceling them. Don't, we're not saying that. We're just looking at where we can move them in the end of the year so that they still happen as robust as we, we've always done it. So look for more email. Uh, as soon as we have more specific details on those things, uh, look for emails on that. But we, we, we have a lot of fun at those things, right? Oh, my so gosh. We, we, oh, yeah. Like, we, we need to have some fun with these end-of-the-year rituals, and they're very, very important, and we Families come in from all over the country, so Absolutely. we're going to do everything we can to make sure that whatever it is that we're allowed to do, we'll do, and if we're not allowed to do some of these rites and rituals, depending upon the kind of worldwide cr health crises, then we'll come up with the best plan B that we will possibly come up with. But That's I think, totally true. I think the way to think about it is this. We're going to hit the ground running on May 4th, and we're going to work really, really hard between May 4th and June 5th to provide every single experience that our students and parents have come to know and love about Juan Diego. Actually, we're so the fifth item that we wanted to talk to you about parents tonight is what's happening with spring sports. Um, you know, I really feel bad for especially our senior kids that are looking forward to baseball season. It sucks. But, uh, it's just terrible, isn't it? Yeah, they it's very, very this. sad. So what we know about it is this, that we're working very closely with the Utah High School Activities Association. Mr. Long has been in touch with them. And the discussion that uh, is ensuing is that the Monday after Easter, they, the association um, intends to send out a survey to all of the schools, the coaches, the athletic directors, and ask how it is they want to resume the sports season when we come back to school, hopefully on May 4th. And it could be, I think it is kind of coming down to one of two things. Obviously, it'll be abbreviated, but 
do they want to try to get all of the sports done in the four weeks that we have before Memorial Day, or do, do they think it might be possible to, even though school might end by, say, May 30th, that they could extend the sports season into the first or second week of June? Mm -hmm. And we, we don't know exactly how we feel about that, but what we certainly want to do, parents and students, we want to make sure that in every way possible that the spring sports get their opportunity to shine and, and do as well as they possibly can. Didn't this boys' soccer team guarantee a state championship this year? Oh my God! What a stellar lineup! Uh, all all of our sports we're, were off. That they team were, is good. Isn't they were. It, they were. Man. They are good. Often yeah. often running though with all of our sports, it's frustrating because we don't know, you know, especially with seniors. There's probably a lot of activities that parents have planned for, for the early part of June, right after graduation, and. It, it, we, it's, it's hard not having specific dates yet, but we just have to be patient. But the main thing is, is we're going to vote and push uh, all of our member schools to do as much as they possibly can so that our students are able to have an athletic season for the spring. And so hopefully that will happen. But what I can say is this, this is probably the significant thing to remember. Parents will be back on with an update. But it's out of our hands in a certain sense. It's going to depend upon the survey that the association is uh, putting out. That survey is uh, scheduled to go out the Monday after Easter, and then I would think that by the end of that week we will have answers. Our vote at Juan Diego is to try to uh, complete as many, if not all, of the sports season as we possibly can. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll vote to have it end by May 30th. My druthers is, uh, I've got nowhere to go. I'd just like to see them play sports to the middle of June if they could. But we'll have to just see how that goes. But understand, parents and students, if you're listening and watching, we really want to make sure we have a spring season to Absolutely. finish off the school year. Absolutely. So, folks, thanks a lot for listening. We tried to give you the best information we could, uh, as much information as we could. There were five basic points that we tried to cover you know, the current outlook for our schedule, we're going to try really, really hard to come back on May 4th, Monday, May 4th, hit the ground running and complete the school year. This coming week, we've got registration that uh, Mr. Colosimo and the counselors will be working with you, uh, upperclassmen for next year. That's this year's uh, current 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. Mm -hmm. um, we tried to talk to you a little bit about the status of our AP program, which, you know, steady as she goes with the college board and we'll certainly be doing testing, but it'll be a little bit different. And then what were the last two that we talked about? Those were the three. What was number four? We talked about all our, uh, the rites and rituals, graduation, commencement, prom, kairos, all those uh, year-end activities that, that everyone looks forward to. So if things go according to form, uh, starting really on Sunday, May 3rd, we've got Senior Song to Terra, and we hope and pray that we'll be able to have that, launch that thing on the 3rd, yep. then come May 4th, uh, school will start, and we'll figure out how to keep as much of our rites and rituals in place, including baccalaureate at the cathedral, graduation on Memorial Day weekend. We and, really senior fair, and senior farewell mass senior on the 14th. Senior farewell mass yeah. and all the other things that go in. And then the final thing was what? Final thing was point? sports, all of, our, all of our spring sports. Right. And we're committed to making sure that every single spring sports has a, has a season. It might be an abbreviated season. It might be a season that runs into June. But we want to make sure that everybody gets to complete their spring sports schedule. So parents, next Sunday we will update you on any changes to these five topics. And we might have some additional things as well. Uh, in the meantime, we also want you to make sure that we're very aware of your emotional health, uh, what it's like socially to be isolated. It's been real challenging. It's challenging for you and it's very challenging for our, um, our students, especially now that we're going through May 1st. So uh, there are resources here at school. The counselors are available. Dr. Colosimo is available. All of us in Campus Life are available. Father Dominic's available. Reach out. Um, we don't expect this to be easy. We just expect that we'll be here together as we go through this. So, so what our concern is are more of the social and emotional elements of this whole crisis because we want to make sure that you know people take care of themselves mentally. Correct. Because it's so challenging. Correct. And we'll continue to give you tips and pointers for that um, as we go through uh, Good Morning JD. But in the meantime, remember our three topics. Number one, take care of yourself. Number two, take care of your friends and family. And number three, take care of Juan Diego. You know, we should end this broadcast with a prayer. We should do the Juan Diego prayer. Sounds like a good idea. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. Amen. amen.
Saint Juan, Juan Diego, be our angel and protect us. us. Stay with us as we struggle in this modern life, often not knowing where to set our priorities. Help us to pray to our God to obtain the gifts of the Holy Spirit and use them for the good of humanity and the good of our church. Through the heart of Our Lady of Guadalupe, to the heart of Jesus, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.